This conference will now be recorded. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Got the KU jersey in the back. Oh, you know got, it. You know it. Got the hair long. Boy, looking good. Look at you. Just glowing. Yeah, it's growing. It's growing. Two years. Uh, I've had my lock, so it, they're growing like wildflowers now. How are awesome. you? I'm good. Just, you oh. know, living life. I see. I've been following you. Oh. On Facebook, the family, the the, the girl, uh, your daughter. <laughs> yeah. So I got uh, two girls. I got uh, one who was out there in LA for a while at uh, USC, and uh, she just graduated uh, last year. Okay. Uh, so that's that's my doctor, and then I got another one who's uh, my artist, who she's uh, finishing up high school, uh, okay. which is crazy. Okay. Wow. I didn't know you had a daughter that old. Yeah. Huh. I'm, I'm I'm old. Yeah. She she finished <laughs> up. That's what's up. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, but I, gosh, what's been going on with you? I mean, I mean, we're gonna I know we're gonna dive into it, but just you know, it feels like a little mini reunion. Yeah, right. So I've been um back in Jersey now, been here um, operating a business. I've operated a I had a uh Avis and Budget franchise okay. for over for over 10 years and I actually just sold it. So nice. now I'm Trying to figure out next steps. I think I want to kind of dip my toe in the real estate game. So I'm kind of thinking about something like that. Cool. Um, I'm also doing a little day trading now. So uh -oh, we'll watch out now. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, I just, you know, back in the day, it just wasn't something that was necessarily available to me. And I can't imagine it was you know, available to uh, to you as well. Uh, so definitely appreciate your time. Yeah, this is, this is, I wish I would have had something like this, you know, coming out of, coming out of college and even before, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah this is awesome. This is definitely needed. Well, uh, let me jump into it and then we can just kind of dive into it. And a lot of the stuff that, you know, we kind of touched on before, um, you know, we we'll touch on at the end as well, as far as what you've been currently doing. So, um, Let's get into it. Um, hey guys, what's going on? My name is Pat Brown. I'm a financial advisor in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, played football for the University of Kansas a number of years ago, uh, a long, long, long time ago. And uh, was very fortunate to uh, have played with a lot of guys and met a lot of people along the way and uh, became very passionate about financial literacy for student athletes, which led me down this path of interviewing former student athletes uh, with the hopes that current student athletes can learn from some of the successes as, as well as avoid some of the pitfalls. And so um, I have with me uh, someone who I uh, uh, really respect and have watched uh, from afar. Uh, she was a little bit, not older than me, but uh, a great older as far as, uh, I'm trying to think, when, you, when did you, because my freshman year was 94, so I think you were already. Uh, 93. 93, okay. Okay. Um, so I have Tamika Dixon here, and I'll tell you a real quick story, which uh, it kills me. So, you know, freshman year, you know, me and the guys are like, yeah, it's, you know, it's off season. We're going to go play some hoops. Uh, <laughs> so we go to Robinson, and, you know, we show up at Robinson, and I see young lady just giving it to people. I mean, crossing people over. I'm like, who is this? And that's Tamika Dixon. I, that's, that's Meek. I'm like, yeah. Meek. So come to find out, obviously, you know, play for uh, you play for KU, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and just read real quick um, my little, um, uh, like I said, at the cyberstalk people. So, because some of the stuff I didn't even realize, obviously, when you played. So, uh, in high school, All American body WBCA uh, mm -hmm. came to the University of Kansas, averaged 14 some odd points to roughly three assists. Uh, Big 12 Player of the Year was named to the 1996-97 Kodak All-American team, uh, was selected 14th overall in the WNBA draft, selected by the Los Angeles Sparks, uh, played from 97 to 2009, uh, looks like he retired in 2010, gosh, played for the LA Sparks, Houston Comets, Indiana Fever, three-time WNBA All-Star, two-time WNBA champion, all uh, WNBA second team, just killing it. <laughs> killing it he had a great career. 
I did, I did. You know, you really don't reflect on what you what you did until, you know, you're done playing. So yeah, I mean, I can definitely appreciate the level of success I was able to achieve now. But, yeah. but while I did it, I didn't even, you know, you just, you just in it. So you don't really just realize. Hooping. Yeah, you just hooping. You just hooping. So yeah, uh, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, one of the things I just kind of do is just read uh, what the uh, definition of uh, financial literacy is. And, you know, I, I keep doing these interviews. I always read it because I'm always under the impression a lot of student athletes have this bad connotation of financial literacy that it's, you know, means I'm not the brightest or smartest. Um, financial literacy is a possession of a set of skills and knowledge that allows an individual to make informed and effective decisions uh, with all their financial resources. And so, hopefully, you have some young student athletes out there that are watching, male and female. Um, you know, that can certainly take from uh, what you have to say. And, and as I kind of uh, mentioned before, I have to make a Dixon on, who um, again, phenomenal player. I can use your. Is your jersey hanging up at the, in the rafters as well? It is. <laughs> it is. Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To be, to you know, to have it be, you know, somewhere in the rafters in Allen Fieldhouse. Which Allen is, Fieldhouse. You know, which is. Long Island. Amazing. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, so um, like I said, I, I went on and like I said, cyber stalking and all that. Um, you know, if you think about, think back, you know, your freshman year, sophomore year, um, when you got into college, did anybody ever talk to you about, you know, financial literacy, whether it's uh, credit cards, whether it's budgeting or anything of that nature while you were in school? I did not. I did not. Like, no one ever really sat down and had that discussion with me. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I got to college, it was kind of like, you know, learning all of these things on the fly, which definitely isn't a <laughs> Um, but, you know, looking back, I wish that I really had, you know, that foundation um, from my family um, as, as you know, figuring, figuring so that when I got to college, it, it wouldn't be where I'm kind of thrown into that fire and trying to figure things out and making mistakes along the way and doing things that I probably shouldn't have done. You know, thank God I was fortunate to be able to dig out of those holes, but, yeah. you know, the, the goal is to not be put into those, you know, those financial struggles early so that you wouldn't have that, you know, that debt and, and other things hanging over your head as you got older. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, ultimately, I think when it's it's it all boils down to exposure, you know, I think obviously no one I keep using throwing, you know, words around like, you know, uh, not the brightest, but it's just about exposure. If we have exposure to the stuff, our eyes are a little bit. Uh, open and uh, we can narrow that gap a little, a little quicker, which is kind of the whole, in my mind, the whole purpose of trying to do this or at least create some type of exposure to anybody that would uh, sit here and listen to uh, what, you know, foreign, former student athletes have to say. Right. Um, so, you know, as far as your decisions about money while in school, was it kind of trial and error? Because I, you know, we had the stipend. I would imagine you guys obviously had the stipend as well. Did you kind of learn and you know as you are you spend all your money on a weekend and like oh yeah <laughs> then our thing was you know you, you wanted to make sure you had the, the room had to be piped out so you know you had to make sure you spent some time at walmart and spending all your daggone money in the mall and then, <laughs> you know by the end of the month you don't have nothing to show for it so, yeah, <laughs> right it definitely was trial and error you know just trying to figure things out and then you know, borrowing to the next month. <laughs> hey, you and me like, both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was definitely trial and error, you know, just trying to figure things out as you go. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, everybody that I talked to that uh, went to KU, it's it's always about, you know, going up on West Coast Beach. And, you know, people had the uh, the cards where you, you can go in and get your free T-shirt, get your pack of Skittles, just fill out this application for a credit card. Oh yeah, you got this piece of plastic you can now use for whatever you want. Oh wait, yep. you got to got to pay on that. Oh, you got to so, pay that. Back. Oh, I, I thought it was free money. <laughs> I thought you gave it to me, and I got my skittles. Exactly. Um, I, I was guilty of that as well, and yeah, I just look back on that, and I, I wish. Oh, I wish I'd known. I wish mm -hmm. I'd known. Like you um, said, all exposure. Mm, definitely. Um. So again, looking back, 
Uh, what would you say were, was your worst financial decision uh, you made in college and what was your best, if you had any? So the worst probably was, I remember taking out a, like a small loan. It was like mm -hmm. a $4,000 loan. I can't even remember now, but um, I took the loan out and can't remember, you know, I, I probably did some crazy stuff with it. You know, I went out to eat and floss and bought <laughs> furniture for the apartment and, right. you know, all that stuff. And uh, you, I can't even tell you. Um, <laughs> but, I, you know, that probably was the worst because I, that loan followed me, you know, followed mm. me to professional ranks. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Now, by that time, you know, interest had built up and accrued over time. And, you know, now that loan has doubled. So now you're looking at, you know, as if it's three thousand, you're looking at a six, seven thousand dollar loan that you got to pay off a few years later. But and then collections and all of that because you didn't take yep. care of it. So that probably was the first, uh, the worst in college. Um, the best, I mean, I, you know, as you as you you move through it and you you know you start to figure things out, you know. You get you a little checking account and a little savings account, and you know you start to kind of build a little bit, um, uh -huh. figure out how to manage, you know, your your expenses and things like that. So I think that probably was the best thing that came out of it. Okay. I did develop some healthy habits. There you go. There you go. And so you know, you mentioned a, a key word, which uh, I think is great habits. Um, if athletes we're so prone, or I say we like, like I'm still playing ball. I think athletes have that innate ability to create those habits uh, that make them successful. Right. And so right. you get to the, the level of, you know, a student athlete or, or a collegiate athlete, or even as you mentioned, going pro, all these habits that you build up have made you as successful as you are. And so I, if they can just learn, if student athletes can just learn that, you know, create the same habits on the other side of it, as far as, you know, savings or whether it's just, having to check an account, everything that you kind of discover later on and that I discover later on, if we can get those habits to them sooner than later, I think, again, uh, they'll be better off. So Absolutely. it's all about the habits. Absolutely. 100%. Um, looking back on college now, what do you wish you had done different in regards to dealing with your money? Um, I think I, you know, if I, if I can go back, I probably would ask more questions of, you know, my coaches and, you know, coaching staff about, you know, topics surrounding money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I could have probably did a better job of doing that. You know, the help was, was there, but, you know, as a child, you know, even coming up in some of the environments that we come up in, you know, we are, money was just not, a, it was, had a, a taboo situation you know yeah i was when i was reading through the questions that you had sent me earlier i was thinking like you know did i even you know i don't even recall as a child going into the bank with my parents or grandparents oh, yeah. you know they never just really brought me so you know these are not topics that we kind of discuss and you know talk about over dinner you know so you you just kind of like figuring it out on the fly so i wish you know, moving, you know, if I was reflecting back, I could, I could have those discussions with even, you know, coaches and people that were in place, you know, for us back then that, you know, probably could have shed some light on some of these things instead of it all being trial and error. Yeah, the, um, what clicked for me, there was a, I don't, I can't imagine if there, I think it was there my senior year. So uh, I was taught by Wayne, I think it was Walden. He was part of uh, Coach Williams' crew. Okay. And he had taught a class. It was an experimental class. It was just for athletes at the time uh, called Transition from College to the Workplace. Yeah. And uh, literally, we had uh, football players, basketball players, track, softball. And it talked about, you know, stuff, mutual funds, uh, insurance, just stuff that you would have to deal with as an adult. Right. And I remember being so embarrassed. Um, and my family situation was as such where, you know, uh, both parents went to college the whole nine yards. It's just, we just didn't talk about it is the bottom line. Right. And, 
Yeah, just to kind of uh, touch on what you mentioned, and we just didn't talk about it at the kitchen table, just didn't talk about it in general. And mm -hmm. so again, it, um, that's when I just really started reading and just trying to educate myself on this stuff because I just didn't deal with it in school. You know, mm -hmm. I was a communication major. I wanted to make movies when I got out of school. Okay. Uh, so hey, go figure, right? Um, yeah. So, exposure, go figure. All the way. That's a hundred percent. Yeah. So speaking of habits, uh, how have the habits you formed in college affected life after college or ha has it? Um, it, it really didn't. Um, you know, once I hit the professional level, uh, I immediately was surrounded by a support group, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I, one of the things I think our um, union did, our uh, the WNBPA, one of the things I think they did early on was provide us with a lot of support in financial areas. Mm -hmm. So you were like drafted and then, you know, you, you went uh, to this, like it was considered a combine, um, but you were already drafted and, then, and you had all of these workshops. So immediately you were kind of surrounded with, you know, with a lot of support in that area. Awesome. So my experiences in college really didn't affect me too much because mm -hmm. I was able to like start from a healthy perspective early on and yeah. then try to on that, um, which I think was, was really, really good. Um, I know that football players, they have this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, um, you know, rookies, well, I would imagine in any sport. And so the fact that you mentioned, okay, well, they, they kind of take it aside and, and kind of have these various workshops. The fact that you listened. Yeah. You got to listen. Now, I didn't listen immediately. There was some definitely some pitfalls that I still <laughs> got into. Um, but I, you know, I listened enough to really have that in the back of my head, like, OK, you know, and then I also the vets, the veterans that had been playing overseas for years and came back into the league and and things like they had helped me as well. That's so awesome. I had really good vets. And then I had, you know, that that support from the from the union and things like that. That's awesome. Um, so and you, you kind of touched on this as well, but what are some of the pitfalls you hope that your story could prevent for young student athletes out there? What would you say to a young Tamika Dixon just starting school? Yeah, um, I think, you know, the times are a little bit different for, for athletes coming out today because I think they're inundated with information. Yeah. So you choose anything today and get whatever you need to get. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if I had that resource back then, I would, you know, definitely tap in, have tap into it. And, um, but there's so much information out there now. You know, it's cool to talk finances now. You know. <laughs> All right. I would say, you know, just educate yourself. You know, even if you're fortunate to make you know, the professional level and things like that. And, and you, you're in a position where you can hire somebody to manage your finances. Know what you're mm -hmm. talking about to still educate yourself yeah. on that process as well so that you can have input on where your money is going. Um, so that's what I look at. Awesome. So we are now at the, uh, the bonus questions. Uh, bonus question being that um, you obviously got through KU, made it to the pros, which barely, very, uh, you know, uh, some if you make it. Um, the changes that occurred as far as everything from income standpoint, how did that affect you? I know you mentioned, okay, we had some things that you necessarily were struggled with prior to coming into the league. How did that all pan out for you? I mean, did you go through the workshops and kind of say, okay, well, I can see wider now? Or how did that play out? Yeah, so. So, I mean, again, when you're like, when you get to the professional level, and you are not used to seeing all of those zeros in your bank account, mm -hmm. you know, you, you're going to do some crazy. <laughs> so, you know, when I first got my first endorsement deal check and, you know, WNBA check, I bought a car <laughs> and, you know, okay. I, and you know, I did I did some things that you know 
probably didn't have to do immediately, uh-huh. but it was like, you know what I mean? So I'm here now. I'm here. Um, yeah, but it didn't take long for me to kind of reel it in, which I'm thankful for. Like, I didn't just go on like a tangent and just spend all the money I had and wait till the next check. Right. <laughs> I did kind of reel, you know, reel it back a little bit. Um, I put some people in place, had some support around me, some people I really trusted um, Mm -hmm. and thought, you know, that can assist me and help me in the financial arena. Um, And not only help me, but uh, teach me. Um, So I was able to, you know, see where my money was going, understand Mm -hmm. the investments that it was going into um, to a point where, I didn't need that financial help anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was able to manage my finances myself. So it got to that point. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Man, can Matt bring the tear to my eye? Well, I tell you, look at you. (laughs) Look at you. It was a process. Believe me, it wasn't all roses. But, you know, I I just, the the pitfalls weren't pitfalls that, uh, that buried me. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. All that I learned from, grew from, and was able to come out better, you know, moving yeah, forward. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I like that that phrase that, you know, pitfalls that didn't bury you. You're able to just get up and dust yeah. yourself off and, yeah, yep. well, that's I mean, good. Like you, you know, like you said, you know, you don't, you, what do you, what could you do to, to keep the athletes from, from going on a 30 for 30 episode? <laughs> you know, you see the stories, you see them constantly. And um, I think if we really had the financial education early, it could prevent a lot of those stories from happening. No doubt. No doubt. Um, and I don't, you know, if things stand now, I don't know how that's going to take place. Uh, I don't know if that's something that, you know, uh, kids coming into college are going to be forced to do as far as a financial literacy class. I personally think, yeah, they should be forced to do it. Um, I don't know if that's going to be something universal across all universities. Right. Uh, and, you know, this little, I guess, passion project that I've been working on is, it feels warm and fuzzy to me. I, you know, I like reaching out and talking to former student athletes. I just think that, you know, every story makes a difference, regardless of if you did great throughout college and, you know, you were great with money. I think that story deserves to be, you know, heard. And so um, I'm appreciative to it all. Um, so, uh, you know, but again, I, as we kind of, oh, go ahead. I do think, you know, kids are being exposed to money uh, conversations earlier, like my son, my stepson. He's actually taking the financial, he took a financial course, you know, as a junior oh. in high school. So, nice. you know, getting these things in high school, you know, I think, you know, if that's the curriculum that they're building it around, understanding mm-hmm. that kids need those type of things. You know, you might not get that at home, but if you can get it at school, you know, that helps to open the door to conversations that you can have with your family later. Absolutely. You know, even going through high school, and again, I know I'm old as I'll get on now, but you have these classes that you think, okay, I'm never going to use this class. I'm never going to use that. I'm never going to use this. You know, something like financial literacy or, or however, you know, you want to phrase it, that's something that's going to be, that's going to have some longevity to it, you know, from high school to college to, to real life. Uh, so yeah, if he's starting in high school, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yep. So. Just have the basics: how to balance a checkbook. You know, mm-hmm. what what are the you know you see your parents, you know, having a house and and those what what are the actual financial requirements that are needed? What goes into buying that? You know, mm-hmm. all of those things kind of make a difference. And I think you know, getting it as early as possible is is key. Yeah. So when you, family and a house and all of those things and you, know, you need that education no doubt um so again kind of coming to an end here um if you can kind of think about i guess uh, for some of the young people out there that have aspiration made to the league what would you want them to know about dealing with my uh, love on it I, I was kind of hesitating asking it because you kind of answered it somewhat um is it more or less just getting those people in in place as far as mentors and and obviously paying attention to you know what they have to say at those uh, symposiums yeah i would but even before that like i said the resources are plentiful for them now 
you know, like, get on YouTube and, you know, figure out how to find it. Yeah, I'm YouTube everything. (laughs) (laughs) YouTube University. Yes, absolutely. Um, So just kind of, you know, just reading up and educating yourself so that you have a general knowledge of what's going on around you. Um, It's, you know, the support system and the, the mentors are great too, and you should have that. But I think if you can get to a position where you can control your own finances yourself mm-hmm. and understand how everything works yourself, um, and then just have mentors in place to make sure that you are going in the right direction, um, I think that's you know that's the ultimate goal. Could have said it better. Could have said it better. So last but not least, what is Tamika Dixon doing now? You know, talking, we touched about it, you touched on it earlier, but just talk about what you're doing now after obviously getting out of the league and some of the uh, opportunities that you have and and all that good stuff. So, you know, immediately, so I, so I retired um, from professional basketball and I immediately got into the financial services industry. Um, I actually worked for Edward Jones for two years. Okay. Um, right after my professional career was up, um, did that for two years, but for me, uh, coming out of what I came in and then into the financial services industry, it was a little slow, like a slower pace. <laughs> I kind of needed something to kind of keep me, you know, on my toes a little more. Um, so mm-hmm. I went into, you know, what entrepreneurial opportunities I can get into. Um, I bought a Avis and Budget franchise um, and I loved it because it was, uh, I was, I took a struggling business um the, the previous owners sold it to me it was struggling heavily mm-hmm. um, and i was able to kind of put an ad competition to it and build it up and get it to where it was performing um but it was something different for me every day you know when i came into the yeah. office something you know a new goal a new something that i had to do every day and that kind of piqued my interest so i did that um built the business grew it um and then you know a little over 10 years decided to sell it this year um Uh sell just went through actually a month ago congratulations Um, thank you thank you um so now i'm trying to figure out you know as athletes we're all trying to we always trying to figure out you know where we can compete next in yeah compete next in so you know, I'm kind of thinking about, you know, maybe dipping my toe in the real estate game a little bit, um, mm-hmm. you know, I've been day trading a little bit and I, I enjoy doing that. Um, that keeps okay. my <laughs> spirit <laughs> uh, going, definitely. I bet. <laughs> so right now, this kind of transitional period of time in my life where I'm trying to figure out next steps, but I, I like where I am. Um, I enjoy waking up and, and doing something different every day. So I'm still, you know, I'm still moving along that same path. All right. That is awesome. That is, well, you know, I'm glad that we had a chance to talk. It's only been like four years since I sent you out that invite. And, you know, you (laughs) kept dodging me and all that stuff, like the Matrix over here. But that's all good. My apologies, Pat. You know I I love you. (laughs) (laughs) I got to give you a hard time. You know Uh, it. Well, again, I appreciate your time. I'll let you get back to it. And, uh, you know, definitely let's uh, stay in touch. Absolutely. Hope to see you on campus soon, someday soon. (laughs) Someday soon. Absolutely. We'll do it. You stay in care. But we all come back. That's right. (laughs) All right. Take care. Take care, Pat. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye.